Welcome to Small Things Brought Together. My name is Robin Love. Small Things Brought Together is an ongoing series of conversations with artists about their creative process. These are long format conversations. So we have plenty of time to dig deep, circle back, say the wrong thing, <laughs> make a correction, <laughs> and really get into um, how does it happen? How, how does art happen? So I thought I would take advantage of this episode just to add a little bit more about how small things brought together happened, which is, I think about four or five years ago, I got this idea that I wanted to share a little more about creative process. And I had this vision of it being in a particular way that was more instructive. Um, and kind of offering um, prompts to people. And I did that for a few um, episodes and realized that to me, that wasn't a very sustainable model. And what I really wanted to do was to talk to artists about their creative process. And in that, it would invite everybody in because it is my belief, my very wholehearted belief that human beings are inherently creative. It is our birthright. And so why, what is it about um, one person that would um, take an artistic creative path and why would one person not? To me, the answer is most likely that somebody was told when they were really small that they weren't good or they weren't good at art or they weren't creative. And that just, you know, set them on a path of, I can't do it. But really, I believe we all can do it. And, and it's really, um, it is something available to all of us. And so these conversations uh, come out of this desire to, to just share um, all these vastly different ways that artists work and create their work in the hopes that uh, all of us are inspired to um, tap into this creativity. So <laughs> it's been a while since I offered that introduction. So for this episode, I am very excited to have with me today, Sue Danielson. Sue is an artist living in Seattle, Washington. Sue works primarily in painting um, but also does installation, multimedia installations, um, drawing, video, lots of really great things. And I wasn't sure if I was going to say this, but I think I am. We did record an entire episode. <laughs> we recorded an entire episode before we realized we actually weren't recording. So... <laughs> So extra special thank you today to Sue for being willing to come back and have um, this conversation again. <laughs> so welcome, Sue. Welcome. So great. Thank you. Well, the first conversation was awesome. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to a second one, actually. <laughs> yes. It was actually the best episode ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> so this will be the second best. <laughs> yeah, no, so great to have you. And I really, truly do appreciate a willingness to come back and um, talk again, because I'm really excited. Uh, it was super fun. And I do think, you know, one of the things is the about small things brought together is it is spontaneous. And I always kind of invite the artist to trust the process of the conversation and not over prepare because there's something in the spontaneity of the con of our conversation that um is is really touches the aliveness of creative process and so um so they're often not they're not rehearsed and they are spontaneous so we don't really have time to necessarily digest in any, um, like the digestion happens after with, afterwards with each of us. So I feel kind of excited that we have actually talked about your work yeah. and, <laughs> and I had time to go back and kind of take it in and digest. And now we're having this miraculous second chance. So yeah, 
Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> so, um, so you're you're living in Seattle, and I didn't really give too much uh, background. So, is there anything else that people should know about you before we dig into your your work? Um, I think that um, what's important to know is in my background, I come from a family of makers. I come from a large family. Um, and so I come by that honestly. And process is really the most important part of my work. As with this conversation, what I do is, is, is generated out of my process. Um, and I've been thinking a lot lately, partially because of our conversation about um, the insistence of abstract imagery in my work and how um, when I first started painting um, I actually my sister taught me I did toll painting <laughs> and then I decided uh, which is basically um, the way I did it uh, paint my numbers <laughs> and I, I I got frustrated with that and um, and had to learn I actually had to learn to draw and paint um, in another um, in another way and then come back to abstraction. So I there's this yin and yang that goes on in my work where I mostly do abstraction, but periodically I'll do a realism or, uh, but that's not something that I actually ever put out into the world or rarely. Um, so so and, you're training really, would you call yourself a self-taught artist? Then? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've taken classes, but I didn't go to art school. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I think I um, I use this quote before. I'm going to attribute this to Felidia Barlow, or Felida Barlow, sorry, who of course just died, and which that's, is a great loss. Yeah. Um, it, I love her. I love the way she talks about her work. And um, she, said that she was not a perfectionist, but she was compulsive. And that resonated with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you started moving towards more seriously taking up painting, what, I mean, can you speak a little more about like, what was the urge behind that? What was going on? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. my. I didn't um, come to painting until uh, midlife because I was doing other things. I um, I was I had a career as a paralegal in litigation, and I did that for quite a while. And um, I decided to step away from that and the level of stress, and that opened the door to. Um, I mean, I actually used to paint at night after work as a way to. I'd listen to books and, and paint. And then when I stepped away from that, uh, it opened the door to take some classes. And, um, and then it, you know, fast forward, <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I love that story so much. I really do, <laughs> I really, because, you know, uh, because there's a, a kind of, um, well, maybe just because maybe I, the way I started this episode, thinking about, um, I've met a lot of people who say like, oh, no, I'm not creative. But you say you grew up in a family that making was always happening. But, you know, they're often um, when we're young, what, when that moment happens, there's like a shame usually attached to it. You know, we're just vulnerable children and somebody's like kind of a little bit crushing our spirit, you know, I'm sure not intentionally for the most part, but it <laughs> happens and it's like profound what I've, what I've seen, you know, is that that block then becomes something really quite profound to overcome. And so, you know, I, my life was is totally different. I, I know, like, since I was just a tiny little kid, I always said I wanted to be an artist. There was never any question, you know? So I don't really know the experience of 
you know, like having that conversation with yourself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, that it's a, the form of art. I grew up thinking that I would become a writer and writing was my obsession as a kid. Although I, you know, I remember um, in grade school, a project we had was to write a book and I illustrated that book. So it was there all along. I just didn't own it. You know, I had an older sister who was the artist in the family mm. and that was her identity. So there is that. Um, and um, once I started painting regularly, the idea of writing just fell away. It's not that I don't do it, but I, um, I wouldn't call myself a writer. I don't have a regular practice beyond <laughs> journaling in the morning. Um, but then again, I'm not someone who keeps a sketchbook either. So um, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> you know, so yeah. maybe, maybe taking those labels away is a good idea. Yeah. Interesting. Super interesting. So in, so in your location, I feel like also is, is influences your work heavily I would say yeah yeah heavily and uh, yeah I neglected to say um, how much being in nature does impact my work um, I grew up camping and hiking um, I lived in Alaska for a while and um, and then I, I think we talked about this before during the pandemic I walk a lot in general and during the pandemic I decided I would explore Seattle on foot and I came across this area unbeknownst to me I've lived in this my house for a while and um, I came across this ravine this lush ravine with um, lots of cottonwoods not fir trees but it was lush and ferns cascading down the side of the hill and it just huge devil's club which are these big leafed um, shrubs with lots of thorns. But um, <laughs> I mean, it's just this magical place and it it really galvanized me as a place for rest and peace. And you know, there's a big mall very close to that, that location. But once you go into the ravine, it's like you're in this magical place. And so um, the last show that I painted was was about that place mm, mm, mm. yeah yeah and I think we we were talking before about how when you know when a city is developed as Seattle is it's easy to lose track of what the natural terrain actually is and to right yeah, yeah well yeah we did talk about that how cities are laid out in a grid. I mean, Seattle's a little wonky like every city, but finding that made me highly attuned to the terrain and where there might be a creek underground most often. You know, Seattle's daylighted a few creeks in the last 10 to 20 years, but it just became inherent to me as I was moving around town, uh, even in my car at that point, like, oh, there's a creek here somewhere. Um, and, and being aware of where the ridges are. There's lots of ridges and ravines and hills in Seattle. And um, it, it just changed that whole perspective. Um, and it, it also made me um, be more aware of the watershed in Seattle. And um, there is a river in Seattle and, and um, with a, a, a friend and colleague, we created a local residency that worked for 10 years on the shores of that river every summer. And so um, the importance of that watershed Seattle, how that was straightened and became a super fun site and there's continuing efforts to clean that up. But beyond that, there are so many streams in this town. Um, I mean, it's, it's the Northwest. We have lots of water. Yeah, <laughs> have to come up water. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, water and like big trees. <laughs> big trees, yeah, yeah. Well, the interesting thing that I discovered um, when I found that ravine is that the cottonwood, I, it became um, a metaphor really for climate change because in that space are cottonwoods. When Seattle was um, founded, and this 
um, north part of Seattle where I am was logged over a hundred years ago. What grew back in weren't the, the fir trees, but cottonwoods and they have started to age out. So when you're in that space, not that unusual that trees fall or there's evidence that a tree has fallen since you were there last time. And so um, it's kind of profound, you know, to be in there. I have a friend who goes in there and paints very regularly, almost daily. And she's always hearing, it's like, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> branches are snapping or yeah kind of kind of a crazy space in that regard yeah yeah there is something about like um the way you're talking about it that it's almost like a, a kind of wild space in a city it definitely is I should clarify that because it's not it's not a manicured manicured space there are trails that are created by walking through, not developed. Um, there are people now that are forest stewards, um, which is something I'm also doing who maintain that space and replant that and facilitate that. Um, but the trails are, are muddy, messy. <laughs> um, and they're just little dirt paths. They're the, not, not a groomed uh, trail with gravel on it. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess I'm also just like, how do you feel like safety wise when you're on in there? Yeah, you know, the that's an element, <laughs> right? I, you know, there's something about that particular spot. Um, it, it's special in part because of that. Um, it's very neighborhoody. The neighbors maintain that space. They're in there all the time walking their dogs. Kids play in the creek. It's a little bit of a throwback in that sense. And while I'm acutely aware when I'm there, I often do go alone. Um, I, you know, I'm paying attention for sure and have an exit route, but I, I have, maybe I've been lucky. Um, you know, certain family members aren't um, concerned <laughs> that I go in there alone, but I, I've just never run into anybody who's given me cause for concern. So, oh, yeah. uh, that's where I stay, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully my bubble won't be burst. But yeah. I, I'm not, right. I'm not, yeah. right, I'm not so naive that I don't consider yeah. that. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a fair question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, it, this is a little bit of a preview to a future episode. But um, I was talking with another artist who lives here in Newfoundland, and. And she was really thinking about like, oh, so like, what are my fears? And, you know, if I'm out in, and she realized, oh, if she's out in nature, she was not really afraid of moose or bears. You know, Newfoundland has actually yeah. a fairly limited number of animals in it, on it being an <laughs> island. <laughs> and uh, humans are definitely the top of the food chain and, um, the biggest predator and so yeah she was just talking about how what she realized was her fear was actually uh, men and that was you know what was sort of holding her back from being out in the woods you know? yeah well I should also add that um, there is um, a forest steward who works in there a lot a guy a mm -hmm. super nice guy so that he actually provides this element of safety uh -huh. because he's he's always there if you yeah. hear somebody noise rustling and rooting around, you just have to look over and, oh, there, there there's <laughs> <Yeah>. Rick. <laughs> well, it sounds like, you know, heaven really uh, to be in it a really city is. and have a wild place to go. I mean, in, in terms of animals, we've seen otter there. I've only seen an otter once, but there are owls, there's beavers. Um, it's an amazing um reminder of the, of the insistence of nature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and well, I feel like this is a good lead in also because you are opening a show of new work um, in April this month. And uh, I feel like, am I, am I correct in saying that this is influenced by your time in that place, <laughs> in that wildness. Yeah, it that always influences what I'm doing. Um, and I think the, the, the part about that 
um, that I want to highlight too is just that paradox that exists. There's that entropy going on, but the but the regeneration um, that that exists in the middle of a city. Um, I just read a report that was um, even though there's this huge effort to regenerate those places, Seattle lost. I don't know, in the last 10 years, like a significant amount of its tree cover. And that, that was a little disheartening, <laughs> I have to say, because the efforts at restoration have been in place for about the same amount of time. But, you know. Yeah. Is that from like people building houses? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, the tree cover in Seattle is everything, not just those wild areas. So, um, which which doesn't mean you shouldn't keep you know keep up the efforts <laughs> to restore what we have, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. just a reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, so would you like to talk about the work that's going to be presented in the show, or do you want to? Uh, you also, I mean, you've had a busy busy twenty twenty three already. You yeah. also just closed an installation, a multimedia installation. Um, which was kind of a collaborative between yourself and uh, two other artists, or something. Yeah, yeah, we, we called it an interwoven um, installation. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be happy to talk, talk about all of those. And just to say, um, generally, that, that idea of paradox um, plays out in my work um, in, in the way I'm using space. And um, part of that paradox relates to nature, but it also relates to how as individuals and people every day we're the same, but we're different. And um, I think that and I've, you know, that's part of what I'm trying to capture with the abstract imagery. And so this, the show that'll be opening in April will be um, a lot of different points of view. Mm -hmm. so that some of them will be zoomed in, some of them will be zoomed out. That's always happened a little bit in my work, I think more so over the um, images that you'll see mm -hmm. in this work. Um, you know, and I guess my hope that um, what the viewer might take away is some sort of shift, sense of shifting. Um, I, I think the pandemic has heightened all of those things for all of us. You know, what, what stability and what isn't stability? You know, where do we find meaning um, and stability in the midst of all of that? We've all been struggling with those issues. Yeah. Um, the rapid yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, and just even thinking about um, space and a kind of another usage of that word, but that like I, my sort of feeling about the pandemic is that we haven't made space for all of our complex feelings, you know? Yeah. And, and I think we're seeing already some consequences of that lack of yeah. space. Yeah, yeah. I all agree right. and I, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I'll, I'll share my screen, but no, keep going. I realize I need to switch. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, yeah, it's, it's all of that. It's all of that. Um, try to make sense of all of that. Um, uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> Hold on, let me just uh, try this again. Okay. So these are works that will be in the show in April and um, maybe I'll just click on the first one. Yeah, so you had said um, that if I click on it, will it get even bigger? Yes. I hope so. There we go. <laughs> I'm just playing around with this new, new option, so. Yeah, I've actually yeah. never seen this website before, so I'm kind of excited by it, so. It's called Art White, artworkarchive.com. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so I'm curious to hear more. I mean, obviously now you've been painting for a long time and full time for, for quite some time. And so you your visual vocabulary is, is very sophisticated. And I'm just, I'm curious, like, how does it, how, how, where do you start? Like, how, how does it evolve? Um, I, I mean, it, it's, it's very essentially just process oriented. So I just start making marks. Um, and sometimes it can be, um, I don't know how this shows up on your screen. For me, it's on the left. There's some um, small marks. I might start there. I might, yeah, I might start with some small lines. Sometimes I um, start with big brush strokes, and then I'm process. I'm going back and forth and back and forth, and um, I often choose my colors as I go along as well, so that. It, it really truly is process-based. This particular piece is a little bit different. Some of the pieces in the show are different from what I've done before in part because um, I think maybe because of the pandemic, but the history of what I'm working on has begun to also be important. And these, uh, this is on a stretcher that was uh, made by a, a dear friend's husband, and she actually shifted her practice from being a painter, she was a fabulous painter, to being uh, a musician, and she closed down her studio. And so I have these stretchers there. I think there's nine of them. They're 32 by 36. They're beautifully made. And, you know, the guy who made them, his name is Tom, and Tom has sub subsequently passed away. So the, just the stretchers themselves have these deep meaning for me. Um, and then the, the fabric that this is painted on is found fabric. So this is an upholstery fabric that I then put some um, plaster over mm. and then began to paint. So that process is a little bit different in this show um, than something I've done before, but those layers of history just seemed important. Yeah, I'm thinking about... Um you know, it takes it from being an, a, a painting, uh, you know, something depicted in two dimensions and it really makes it an object. Yeah, yeah. And if you see that, I, I should have taken some images, but from the side, you can see the original fabric. That's really yeah, cool. yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, just because of the convention of, of the website, I'm sure. And how we need to look at work <laughs> digitally, you know, some of that, yeah, it's, it's easy to uh, maybe lose that, but yeah, uh, personally, I love it when paintings are, are those, are objects, yeah, like a full object experience. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, uh, you know, the, because even just the way you were talking earlier about your coming into uh, painting, I was thinking about your own history as a series of like layering and building upon and yeah, thinking about also then this decision to bring memories and histories into the structure itself of the piece. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that I skipped over is in between, and, and as I was transitioning to painting full time, I also had started a, a personal chef business. So that was very much a process of going to the store, getting all these raw ingredients. And then I was making a week of meals for people and then leaving them in their home. So, um, so I'd physically go to their house. I'd buy the groceries, go to their house, make all these meals and, you know, go from one thing into another thing. And that process was, um, I love that process. <laughs> and so um, just, it comes back to that thing of always making, making, making. I, um, I, 
we haven't talked about the fiber pieces that I do, but I, as a kid, I, you know, I crocheted, I tried to knit too organized. <laughs> I like the chaos of being able to crochet any way, any direction, <laughs> add <Yeah>. any color. <laughs> Maybe if I was a better knitter, I could do that, but. Uh, it's, now crochet it's is your best best. bet. <laughs> <laughs> All those, all those loops on a, on a, you know, needle, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely want to look at those too. Let me see if I can just forward it like that. No, it doesn't make me just... Ah, not going to do that, huh? Yeah, let me see. Okay. Oh, wait, no, there it is, a little next. All right, just speaking my way, the navigation here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so and you were saying um, that you were playing with this, um, you know, depth of the space. And I remember from a previous time, uh, you were talking about, I feel like the previous painting was maybe if I was going to say more typical in the sense of like, a lot of details and layers visible and and so this one becomes much more simplified um though yeah. you know, that's based only on um the work that i have seen to date so yeah this is a little bit of a shift although i've always done some simplified work um i don't generally show them at the same time i have to some degree but i um i decided to embrace that idea of the simplified or a zoomed in imagery and then the stepping away. Um, when the other shift that's gone on is, um, and it, this harkens back to the idea of maps and um, that of, um, I guess, of searching, <laughs> always exploring and um, creativity and, um, so a lot, a lot of, in the past, I've often referenced the map-like qualities of my work. And I think um, with, um, and, and it was that idea that to ungrid the landscape, you know, to embrace it as a land, not focusing on the ownership and where things are, but an imaginary sort of space. And um, with this, new show, I, I feel like I've moved away from the map imagery a little bit in searching space in a different way. And mm -hmm. so that exploration includes, you know, looking closely and then backing away. Mm. I like the idea of um, that you're like, I, I know you're not doing it literally, but the, that, you know, zooming in and that this potentially is like a zoomed in piece of something else but also i like it um i don't know if you had all the titles last time but uh you know i like <laughs> that uh if you're calling it the bright line and of course to to look at this you know the first glance you know i don't see line until i look a little more closely really and um, of course, yes, I see the these, but then I was like, oh, maybe that's the bright line. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it, it's all of that, right? We, we think we know and then we don't really know. Then we think we know. I, I love that. Um, I love that you saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's something happening for me, like right over here and like, like a perspective thing that's like, okay, I'm, I'm sort of taking this in. And then all of a sudden there's like a, a body in space reference that I, yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, it, it all, um, sometimes I'm not aware of that until a couple of years later, <laughs> those shifts. <laughs> I mean, part of 
part of what I'm doing, um, somebody asked me this question at an artist talk recently and they, they said, um, you look like you're trying to surprise yourself. And that, yeah. that's really what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you're working in a way that's not like, you're not, I don't know, maybe you do sometimes walk in and, and think, oh, I want to start with blue today or whatever, you know, it, but it sounds like it, a lot of it is quite spontaneous and um, yeah. All right, I still feel like I should be able to move forward from here. Oh, that's, whoa, look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's really zoomed in. <laughs> it is. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you, you know, we don't have to look at every single one, though I'm happy to, but because uh, I really also want to talk about your installations and your fabric, yeah. your textiles. So, um, but I think, you know, you talked about previously, maybe I'll click on this one too. Um, if there are particular ones you want to be sure to talk about, let me know. And yeah, I think these are three that are a good representation of what I'm talking about in terms of different um, levels of detail. We'll, yeah. we'll say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and you had mentioned about working on found fabric also. So you're not starting necessarily with a canvas that you've gessoed. Yeah. Um, the found fabric isn't in every piece, but um, for the most part, if it isn't found fabric, I've painted over an old painting. So there's that history as well. And sometimes these pieces um, in the show have been painted over, um, I don't know, maybe over a 20 year period. <laughs> because Some wow. pieces just, you know, they just keep coming back and I, uh yeah <laughs> I mean that happens to, right it happens in everything even and that'll come up in the installations I mean the what I'm using is almost all recycled from prior installations or from other some other part of my life where I found it when I was walking around the city or um so this history is just really continue to work um they're just in every part of my work now yeah I mean part of me hears that and thinks I wonder what a um preparator would say about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well uh the 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 artist that I um one of the artists um on the installation that I just did is a conservator at the Seattle Art Museum <laughs> which is the coolest job in the world. It's it's very cool. But they have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of opinions that most artists are like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> 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 yeah, actually, uh, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind just zooming in on this one because I yeah, feel yeah. like it's really like has a lot of, you know, this, these are, is, this your drawing here these black yeah there's acrylic transfer there's um screen printing here um and collage along with acrylic paint so mm -hmm. a lot of different mm -hmm. media going on here yeah mm -hmm. and what is its overall size that one is um i think that's a 20 by 26. So. Yeah. I'm just enjoying it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I think that with this show, I'm also playing with color in a different way. Um, so there, there's, yeah, I don't yeah how would I talk about that anyway I'm just playing around with a lot of different Maybe palettes I'll... in this so I just switched now over to your website which I highly encourage everyone to go and 
look at every single thing on there. <laughs> Maybe I'll pull up even from um, a couple of years ago. So when you say that, like, oh, yes, I can definitely see obviously a different palette, but even just, you know, different marks, different, different, mm -hmm. yeah, different mark making. Um. Oh, I see what I just did. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> I thought I was going uh, down into new, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll bring up this one, yeah. Yeah, always the layers though. Well, frequently the layers, but even the more simplified pieces have a lot of paint layered on them. Um, thinking about, yeah, tangles and interactions. Yeah, and you know, I'm just thinking about, um, we'll look at your installation, but also the textile pieces that you often put the wooden background um, to support. And yeah, the feeling of like structure and the newer work feels, I feel less of that. Um, like, yeah. Yeah, like okay. there's a, uh, a structure that things are sort of sitting either under or on. We didn't obviously, we can go back and look at more. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, I, I'm just thinking about that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot less line. It's more formally more, more um, shapes. Shape, yeah. So the space is maybe more created, um, by the color, the relationship of the colors. Right, like the the body there that was in the with the yellow <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Bodies and faces seem to be showing up. I don't know. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, and you had referenced earlier that um, maps had been a big piece of your uh, thinking or just interest and you have a uh, I think a, on the is it in the works on paper um some that like really I don't know if it's in this section but like really are trying to remember like yeah. on maps almost maybe it's in your um I should know the answer to that yeah there are some pieces um yeah um, and even I, I have a series that I was not on my website actually um, that are, um, I started at a residency down on um, the Washington coast back in 2018. Um, they're literally pieces of paper that I take out and, and, and I fold them up like an old roadmap. So mm -hmm. they're drawings. Um, I should get them on my website. Mm -hmm. I have a, quite a few of those. Mm. I feel like I saw it in your, um, the latest exhibition, but you also have one that looks like you, a map that you then drew over on top of like directly, or was that just like, it actually just looked like a map, but it wasn't a map. Um, yeah, it might, I did do, I produced um, a copies of a map with um, some writing on my exhibitions. That might be what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. You have more of your crochet pieces. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so these are like the wood structure where which becomes the way that you are able to stretch the crochet out. And um, what is their relationship to the painting? Or do they, do you see them having a, a dialogue with the painting or? Yeah, they definitely have a dialogue with the paintings. Um, I, I mean, my process, the materials are different, but the process is the same mm -hmm. when I'm creating these. So, um, you know, that structure gets uh, obscured by the, but then integrated into the, the form of the, the knitting. So. Um, and because they're a different material, they're very tactile, of course. Do you notice that people touch them? 
Yeah, people always want to touch. Yeah. There's something <laughs> about. I don't know why people just feel very free. They wouldn't touch a painting, but somehow, right. and, you know, it. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I mean, it invites that air. So. Um, and do you work simultaneously? Like, do you just build the frame kind of randomly or do you look at the piece and think, oh, I'll use this, 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 and this? Um, the frame always gets built afterwards. After, uh-huh. Um, the painting on the frame is responsive to the, to the, the fiber piece though. I'm just gonna go back to the other one. I mean, I will say they just look super fun to make. <laughs> They are really fun to make. <laughs> I I have to interact with my cat with these though, because they think they're beds and they're fun. <laughs> well, you made them just for them. <laughs> they did. It's all for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I have to say, uh, even uh, when we were looking at the other um, paintings too, I was thinking, oh, you know, when you're talking about your process being pretty spontaneous and you come in and don't necessarily even know what color you're going to use, I was thinking about the role of pleasure in your work. Yeah, I mean, um, early before the pandemic and during the early stages of the pandemic, I did go through one of those periods where I wasn't painting. Um, I, I wasn't having fun painting and I started doing more installations. Um, and I, so it's, it's um, the beauty of having the show coming up, it forced me back in the studio to paint. And um, in that process, I rediscovered why I love to paint <laughs> and um and I, I guess because of the pandemic and I went through um an illness during the pandemic um that I came out the other side very healthy and I'm, I'm good but all of those things um led to even more just giving myself permission to play mm. Mm play with the paint, play with the space. Um, yeah, mm. just have fun. <laughs> you know, because I mean, we'll talk about this a little bit on the, the last installation, but the, the title of that installation is called Breathing Room. And, and that relates to how during the pandemic, we, I mean, we started to realize how dangerous it is to share the air with each other. And um, so we, um, it just became very poignant. And so we, um, but we also wanted to create a space. Uh, this is with Barbara, Barbara Robertson did the videos here. Um, there is also a piece in the front of the gallery called an atmospheric river blanket. It kind of dips over the wall there. Yeah, thanks. And, um, you know, so Von Bell created these blankets and you can take that blanket up off the couch and wrap yourself in it. So some people came in and wrapped themselves in the blanket and walked around and experienced this. Amazing. Which was <laughs> awesome. Um, so, you know, so there, it was both of those things. And then of course, the irony is I got COVID like two days after the show opened. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it is a little. <laughs> no, I mean, I, fortunately, I, not a bad case, but it was my first go round. So it was just a little ironic. Um, but, uh, you know, the, Barbara is very much about um, escapism in her work and her paintings are very bright and um, very structural. And, um, you know, so we're playing that off against um, I, I, my part of this is the structure, um, and every part of that is, um, has a personal history. Um, I, I have to share with you a story about this installation because I was there on Friday in the gallery and, um, a woman came in and she was there for about 
45 minutes to an hour and she was speaking about the loss of her mother within the last year to 18 months and she talked about how this she actually is a neighbor of Barbara's and went and talked to her after she got home that this piece changed her which is a remarkable thing yeah. um she felt like this um it's not really a grid, but that pattern and then the piece has fallen um, on the ground where a piece, how she felt after she lost her mother, how pieces of her life had fallen out. But that as she moved across this installation, the light and the playfulness in the corner um, gave her hope. Wow. And so it was, it was a remarkable thing to hear. <laughs> to hear. You don't I'm usually crying have a that little bit. <laughs> Yeah, you did. I mean, I'm done. I can quit now. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like, wow. Yeah. Oh, like you, it was exactly what she needed right at that, in the moment she needed it. it really yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Wow. I feel like now I'm looking at it with completely fresh eyes. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, it makes me think about your, you, what you had just said before you told that story that all the pieces have some kind of history. They're not just, you didn't go to the lumber yard and buy stuff and then cut it up and, you know, fabricate something like it, it's all, um, yeah, has its own history. And I, you know, stuff like that, just it's communicated and in ways that are so subtle, we don't know. We don't know. And obviously that story <laughs> yeah. brings like right there. <laughs> mm. I mean, I have to say every, in all the pictures and also I want to say people should definitely go and follow you on Instagram. Um, you have some great detail shots on there as well of this black piece always catches my eye um, just so beautiful and just like the way that it interacts in the space and with the other objects and and the fact that the pieces are on the ground I love that she saw her like grieving process in it that's incredible yeah yeah mm. it yeah takes my breath away yeah <laughs> I mean <laughs> yeah it, you could never anticipate that response <laughs> if you had wanted it it wouldn't have happened <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say my eye also goes like to right here I don't know really what it is but like the crochet and then it looks like I can't tell if it's like actual netting or if it's painted or I don't I don't even know if yeah, I care, yeah. but it's so beautiful. It's, okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, this is what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very like, structural. Like uh, almost looks like you printed something onto a overlay on a existing map. That's like, yeah. Actually, can we zoom in on that one? I'm loving this feature. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And this is at, on a building material. It's on Tyvek. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I always think it's like a. More people should use Tyvek. <laughs> I haven't used it for a while and I really, I, I mean, a, a friend of mine bought a 75 foot roll of the stuff and then we were passing the roll around, you know, it's like an addiction. I yeah. want more tie back. <laughs> I love it. Well, I have a, a friend who's, who makes books and she's like, you know, tie is archival. Speaking of archivalness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't rip. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> so actually uh this over here is looks like a projection on top of a painting is this from the artist you were saying yeah you make the, um... yeah barbara robertson yeah that's a uh, one of her paintings with a projection over that 
a projection of one of her other images? She, yeah, one of her uh, video of hers and then one of her paintings. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I I was not able to get a video to load onto my website oh, that would work for this. But it, yeah, it's on my Instagram page. Yeah, yeah. Were you Hopefully ever I'll able to that. be there when it was like really dark in the yeah. space? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a little bit of a downside of the space. So it's a beautiful space to work in. Um, but yeah, being there in the dark when the gallery hours weren't conducive to dark, but I mean, there is actually a window blocked out right there, but there was oh. always like, it's the only time in Seattle I prayed for rain. <laughs> <laughs> it was remarkably sunny in the month of February. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. That's funny. <laughs> And this is a, a project you did also during the pandemic. Um, yeah, this was a, an installation that was supposed to happen in the gallery on, on the campus of Edmonds College, north of Seattle, and then the pandemic hit. And, um, and they said, well, we have this empty sculpture studio. You want to give it a go? <laughs> but they, they were doing hybrid classes. And since the primary purpose was for an interaction with the students, and it gave me an opportunity to play with the space. So um, that's, that's what this turned into. <laughs> <laughs> and um, th these pieces here are part of it. They are part of it, yeah. I think on, when I saw it before, I wasn't, I didn't realize that. And then you said something and I was like, uh oh, it's not, you know, classroom store. This is like, this is the, yeah. and then there's this and the- Those are the maps. Those are some of the maps I was talking about. I forgot that I had included those here. Yeah. Oh, and this is one of your um, videos. That's, yeah, that was projected over the, over the maps on the, oh. above the maps. I mean, I think, you know, on, early on, we really felt that sense of time slippage because things, you know, suddenly everything was shut down. And we were just grappling with all of that. And like you say, we're, we, we haven't processed, we haven't even begun to process what happened to us, I don't think. Maybe. Maybe a little bit, but. Yeah, that's probably. I realized when I. Probably uh, good, yeah. I shared my screen. I forgot to share the sound, which is like a separate thing you have to click. Um, uh, but there is sound with that. Um, video and it sounds what I heard was like people and water yeah just the blending of those yeah yeah is this like a stop frame animation or mm -hmm. that you like to um do? some of it is I mean I layer um um stop motion animation with um, video that I shoot. Um, so oftentimes like my paintings, it's, it's layers and layers and layers of imagery. Um, sometimes it, it's so many layers, it just becomes a flow. Um, and sometimes you can see some of the imagery. You could see the, um, the natural world in that one underlying all the movement. <laughs> Yeah, well, I highly recommend there we can see the items on yeah, I highly recommend the, the time to uh, see and and explore um, memory shells. Can you say a little bit about that? The title? Um, I think that relates to um, you know how our memories can get fragmented um, or you know they're it's um, uh, how the weird way the brain works <laughs> and pulls in <laughs> random memories. 
uh, I think of it as being on shelves in my brain and, and you know, <laughs> just sort of sorting through there. And... Yeah. I mean, it makes me also think, I, I'm sure this was not on your mind at that time, but, uh, you know, with people with long COVID or just anyone who's had COVID, like the whole COVID fog, you know, that people get. Yeah. Pain and... I mean, I, I will also share that I, I was in an accident, car accident about eight years ago, and I did have a brain injury as a result of that. Um, and so I went through this process of, it was actually kind of fascinating in a weird sort of way where I could suddenly, I could start to see um, things, uh, not things, but the ways that my brain worked started to return and I was conscious of that. And so maybe that's part of what this is relating to. That is amazing. I mean, it, it also, I don't know if, if you think of it, but it may, to me, it, it even brings more meaning to all the layers in your paintings and, and all your work, you know, this like layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And I don't know, I mean, you got, you got yeah. a glimpse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really, it's it, whatever, it's a lived experience, right? At the end of the day, that is, it is, um, trying to make sense of a lived experience. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me if I'm going, I'm skipping around too much. Oops, what happened? Oh, you went to videos. Yeah. Oh, here they are. Yeah. That's yes. Cool. I wanted to play this one. <laughs> yeah, thought process. There were often brains. <laughs> I've been thinking about this one. <laughs> yeah, and I partnered with um, Greg Finibaldi. He did the audio on this. I don't know if you can turn that on. Yeah, I think it comes in a little later. I'm going to full screen it. Yeah. Can you hear the video? Seems to come in and out. I'm not sure why it's um, inconsistent. Now I remember last time that happened too, where I just got so sucked into it. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I, I love the way that um, Greg's sound, I mean, he, he brings in this eerie beauty that I just love. <laughs> it's really, uh, yeah. And it, you know, it was actually, um, it was making me think about your installation and the black, fabric and the pieces and 
maybe because I have spent most of my day today uh, trying to write this letter of intent to creative capital. <laughs> Do they want to? <laughs> and you know, this is a common thing: is they want to know, like, okay, so like this project, where does it come from? You know, in your artwork, or does it? Have blah, blah, blah. So I've been thinking about all that, and you know, sometimes I can be irritated by that question because it's like. I don't know, partly because of course it's coming out of past work, but it's not a straight line. You know, I often don't even know until afterwards, like, oh, wait a minute, that was really related to this thing that I did 10 years ago. And I don't know. And so the reason I'm bringing it up is that seeing that video really gives some context also to the immersive installations that yeah, good. Yeah. That makes me want to go back and look again at them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and like you, I mean, when you've been making work over a, a long period of time, it it is always striking to go back 10 or 20 years ago. Oh yeah. It was there. It was there that long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's I mean, maybe it's great to have a reason to go back and sort of notice that the seed was planted or, yeah. A threat, yeah. You know. Yeah, I think, yeah, it can be good and bad, but mostly good. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's bad, I paint over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so highly recommend coming did I now have I have I zipped over anything too quickly that you want to share um no I think I mean we've covered a lot <laughs> well you have a lot of amazing work on your um Thank maybe you. I want to look again at this just because I'm I'm so feeling it <laughs> yeah I want I did we I, we looked at that we did but there's uh, maybe in um breath of a distant when we could look at um this one? briefly I mean I I also um really love doing collaborative installations and and I I want to say you know that woman's response to that installation with Barbara Roberts and I, I I think there was an alchemy that happened between our work that um I, I wouldn't have been achieved by myself you know and and it's that alchemy that she's responding to Mm, um, yeah. So, um, I yeah. So I really value and enjoy collaborations because they send me went different directions, and um, I always learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And now I'm actually remembering from our earlier conversation that we talked about this um in that how it dismantles that kind that very um what I think of as like a patriarchal view of the artist as like this heroic yeah. loner right. we, yeah yeah we did talk about that I had forgotten about that and how there is no such thing as a solo show because yes um, yeah who builds the frames who takes the photographs you know who you know, who holds the work to the gallery? You know, I, I don't do that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, that potential in collaboration that, yeah. You know, it yeah, isn't. and even um, with a solo show, you know, there are people looking at my work, giving me feedback, you know, uh, it's just not done on a vacuum. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah, the, the, um, the community in the art community um, and the community that I build around me um, is essential, is essential as my studio practice. It, it truly is. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah, and just thinking too about um, Well, you know, I was going to say how easy it is to, I don't know if it's easy, but like there are definitely have times where I forget that. 
and those are very lonely times. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes was, we need that as well. I think that, you know. Well, yeah, we need it all, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, but to be reminded is very helpful and um, yeah, and you know, there, just to say that the art world is such a bizarre world <laughs> and, <laughs> it is. and it is. often <laughs> artists are pit against each other. We are set up to be competitive with each other through all these like you know, competing for funding, competing for exhibition space. You know, I, I don't know if you have anything in Seattle, but in New York, um, PS1 had, I think, as like a biennial, it was called Greater New York. Mm -hmm. Even the title that. makes me want to throw up. And it was, yeah. I just remember when the curators were going around to studios, it was like the buzz, you know, like, did you get a yeah. studio visit? And then you would like feel bad because no, and then you know, or whatever, you know, or feel great because yes, you know, and the right. whole thing just was like, made me sick. I was like, just, oh, I wanted to like pick it in front of <laughs> <laughs> Not, you yeah. know, and I knew it would like, it would be like, oh, because you didn't get in, but it was really because it's exactly the wrong way that I want to be in community with artists right and with my own artwork actually yeah yeah I mean I think there's um wherever you are in your practice or I mean we're basic the basic questions that we're exploring are the same yeah and that doesn't I don't think that changes at least it hasn't for me I'm always um, trying to communicate or surprise myself or whatever it is that that, that actual process, whether, whatever the materials are, is the same. And so we're all just trying to figure things out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is elusive as hell. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and may it always be elusive, you know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And just thinking, you know, so when when I first started doing Small Things Brought Together, uh, I, I had heard this radio program and um, scientists had done research into creativity and what 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 did creative people do how did their minds work? Was there something they could like pinpoint that made someone creative and someone not? And uh, the answer was no, <laughs> in the sense of <laughs> everyone has this potential. Everyone has this potential. And what they discovered was that creative people just did certain things that other people maybe don't do in their lives. And, and uh, one of them was kind of like what you said earlier about when you had this show, so you had to start painting even though you kind of weren't totally digging it at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> which is that exactly. Like, even though you might not be really wanting to do it, you still go in the studio and do something. You, know, you still do it even though it's, it's not, you don't really want to. And then the other one is like, you use it as a way of self-reflection. And then the one that I'm finally getting to, which is that uh, there's no mistakes really. Like things don't go as planned all the time. <laughs> but it's never right. like, it's very rare to have a failure. Like what is a failure in the studio? Yeah, it didn't turn out the way you imagined, but you use it for something else, you know, or you'd be like, okay, I won't do that again. <laughs> right, you and sometimes, it, yeah, it's Sorry. the best thing that happens. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I was so struck, especially by that last one of like, oh yeah, there's like, we live in a world that doesn't create a lot of space for mistakes. And that's partly why these episodes are like an hour long or longer because I want us to get into the weeds. <laughs> yeah, right. I think um, whether I like it or not, the weeds always teach me more, <laughs> you know, <laughs> after, a, after a while, I think yeah. that's what they taught me. <laughs> yeah, 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 so good. And, you know, the fact that you bring in all this, um, especially in, you know, well, in all of your work, you're like all the layers and all the materials, whether it's found fabric or stretcher bars that belong to your friend's husband or, you know, it's all of it. It's all of it. And yeah, to me, that's like, like that woman's experience, you know, this is what we live for that, you know, and yeah. Yeah, and you, you, if you, like I say, you can't, you couldn't set it up and make that happen. Yeah, never, never. And it, you know, I, the, the takeaway, I was just talking with someone about that this morning, just that, you know, and it, it may never happen again, right? And that, that's okay, because it happened once, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah this is who you're talking yeah oh yes okay yes yeah let's yeah. talk about this <laughs> well yeah so this was um my first collaborative installation um i i collaborated uh, with a video artist um named lauren dake and then um i invited a cup um tim cross to do a sculptural piece, which is um, the piece on the right. I don't know if you can see it in that video, but it, yeah. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Mm. And this was plain with space again, because it wasn't very clear when you looked at it, that you could actually walk inside. So um, there was a very different um, experience looking at the structure versus being inside of it. So it was um, addressing that issue of paradox mm -hmm. and experience. Well, you know, even to say like, you giving yourself permission and then people feeling permission to touch the textiles but not the paintings and then the idea that we look at a we we often look at art just sort of straight on but now you've invited someone to actually walk inside yeah there's a lot i feel like there's a lot there in all of your work around Well, maybe, uh, yeah, surprising, not just yourself, but everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me, this one especially makes me feel like you've invited me to like walk inside a one of your paintings. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, here's thanks. the piece. Yeah. Oh, that's a good picture. Yeah. Also just interesting how color um how the color functions and just knowing, you know, in your, all your work, it's such a big piece of it. 
but to see how you handle it differently in different contexts. Hey, there's that material again. <laughs> it, it does pop up. Good eye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, there's a there's a picture of the rocket, John. <laughs> mm. Mm. So before we close, is there anything else should we um, look at? Oh, I think you've covered a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, ground. <laughs> well, there's a lot, a lot to look at, and it's so beautiful and. Yeah, enjoyable <laughs> rich <laughs> very rich yeah. Yeah. well thank you thank you for redoing this and um, inviting me it's it's a joy it really is thank you so so much so